Hello everyone, back with some crazy large size newsprint experiment. Yeah, I wanted to draw uh, my main character for extra stage uh, again on large size, uh, Abrao, so this was an interesting experiment. Also got a new cam if you've noticed, much clearer to see. But the angle, I'm gonna have to mess around with that, especially with camera length. Anyhow, from the start, uh, using Conte pencil, really big pencil, uh, sharpened to a long tip, mostly to get volume, and something that I really kind of got reacquainted technique-wise uh, was basically um, starting a sketch uh, without lifting the pencil from the paper, and it kind of helps my brain just understand and feel the volume of whatever I'm drawing. At the same time, uh, I can notice certain, you know, I can technically do quick, sharp reactions to say, okay, well, there's an edge here, this has to feel like an edge, or it has to feel hard, or this has to feel soft. So I'm kind of getting back into that specific technique, um, and it quite helped out. The uh, difficulty is using that with Conte, seeing that Conte is a very rough. Uh, and will give you, you know, very intense lines. So that was part uh, part of an uh, interesting little experiment. And at the same time, seems my focus at first was basically volume and having some foreshortening. I always, you know, I fucking love that foreshortening. Uh, so with foreshortening comes atmospheric perspective, and that is something I kind of try to cram down later on. But uh, I did get to learn a couple of new things or new approaches while doing this. One of them, uh, again, like I said, getting reacquainted with just drawing and not lifting the pencil uh, from the paper when it comes to laying everything down and getting the volume. Another thing is, now I know the HP is my, all right, no fear type of pencil because it's so light. I can straight up just block in what I want and go, yeah, no consequences, because it's HP. It's a rough pencil, but just getting that feeling or that, you know, that brain reaction helps me just, I don't know, not get shy and just go for broke. Uh, so that is something I'll make a lot more use of because uh, I do tend to stick around the B, B2, B3 because they are weapons of mass destruction, as I say. Uh, no, they straight up give me more flowing lines and um, heavier tones. And speaking about tones, wow, that is something I kind of just want to get back into learning how to properly set tones at the start or interactively, like adding that to my process where uh, with the whole visualization aspect, I want to be able to lay down tones or think about tones as I start the drawing so that I know the characters, the various elements and how they relate to each other. It's a bit difficult, but eventually it'll just piece in. Of course, I do notice that one of the eye, uh, because of the eyebrow, just looks a tad bit awkward or the pupil does. Um, yet, I at that point, I wanted to lay out the darkest dark, which is the pupil. And even then, on 3B, it didn't give me that dark. Maybe, no, I can't even bring a 9B pencil, so I don't know how I'm going to fix that. Maybe I'll make sure that before I draw or lay any other tones, I shove in the darkest dark with the 3B, and then keep it to the side to, you know, until I need a very dark dark. So... Another thing I kind of got obsessive over is when it comes to the cast shadow. I want to get that cast shadow thing um, because it helps bring out the volume. It helps. It's another one of those key aspects that helps um, put your character in reality in a sense. Uh, when light hits and there's a cast shadow, the cast shadow helps bring out the form of whatever's underneath. So it's a good thing to have, 
yet it's very difficult to apply and even now uh, the cash shadow I did was a bit too dark so I took my needed eraser lightened it up and I do like the effect that brings um, on a previous attempt it gave me a terrific cast shadow for the nose on this one eh, maybe my forms weren't that great or I expanded the cast shadow a bit too far when it comes to the nose you'll you'll see it uh, but at least just trying to get that cast shadow fake going um, is a good objective and funny enough I was supposed to just do this as a quick little drawing yet because of my love for Conte everything just went like all right uh, now we're later and okay <laughs> it's not over yet so I don't know uh, it's it's been a lot of fun I need to work around with how basically how um, how I need to set my shadows sorry again I've just got some random texts here ah oh, man but um, yeah just working around with values and such and I want to keep working on this big sized paper it gives me a lot of options to learn about volume and messing around with values at the same time I'm kind of pondering how am I going to have um, animation movement practice on this kind of paper because the only medium that seems to be very effective is Conte and Conte is quite heavy so who knows I might just start uh, I might just try to bring back some 9b pencils or even 10b which I'm ordering and should be coming in soon uh, seeing how that how the new spray reacts to it if it doesn't do well then I'll purchase more Conte um, while eventually just bringing back my Ingram Bond Pro paper on the next I don't know $300 order I do every year love that paper I really do uh, something a bit off topic is when it comes to the Ingram Ingram Bond Pro animation paper I picked up a paper batch a batch version of it okay um, mostly for comics or other things so they don't have the the staples the animation paper um, the peg bar holes they're not in there and when I'm starting because I'm currently starting to use that batch my animation paper batch is thinning out and I notice it's not the same bloody texture and there goes this confusing aspect of wait a minute it's Ingram Bond Pro it's 22 LB why isn't it the same bloody texture what's going on here I don't know I'm gonna have to figure out the next order but I sure know I am not ordering uh, those drawing pads again I'm gonna stick to the animation paper where I can safely purchase 500 of them and I know they're gonna be all the, the same texture who knows maybe time not using them for a certain amount of time but that would be dumb really dumb I highly doubt that kind of stuff happens but hey if you know anything about that just, just tell me I say the paper would be dumb <laughs> so here uh, trying to bring more uh, bring some more atmospheric perspective by darkening the hand that is forward and now I kind of have a much more uh, more of a grasp on what that hand or that arm is supposed to feel like shouldn't be hyper muscled because you know teenager type of character and I guess I kind of went a bit too far with the shoulder and the arm so that is something I'll have to rethink or consider next time not to make them like Mr. Muscle type of uh, type of anatomy but mostly just toning it down um, I put the fault on my muscle magazine reference I should have used you know the playboys on the side <laughs> no but uh, when it comes to model magazines when it comes to muscle magazines terrific cross references I find those uh, to me it helps me a bit more than having anatomy books on only anatomy books you know I always got to have the anatomy books on the side yet cross referencing it with model pictures is good it's really good so I gotta watch out but uh, it kind of helped me just get a bit more focus on the face and you know giving me hints always got to use them as hints on how to shade the face uh, how it's supposed to feel so uh, great to have around and stuff I'll need to consider you know acquiring some more not only having PC reference because I can't just twist my head 180 degree now nah, having physical references on the side 
so I do have Bridgman on one end and the model magazines on another side. Of course, not having the camera pan towards them, I was trying to keep things focused on the drawing. And even then, I gotta try to bring the camera closer. All that without hitting it, <laughs> hitting it with my arm. But those are the type of things um, I like to do. Just after doing a couple of, uh, you know, learning and looking at master studies, just okay, how can I apply these techniques to my own work, and how far do I bring it? How far do I scale it back? And I guess a thing I'll have to do is just go full crazy, seeing, pushing it to the max, or to the logical extent and then okay let's scale back to get what I actually want uh, so when it comes to the next drawings something I should technically do is pick up that HB and just fill everything afterwards uh, I do do a lot of blending with the HB from the B Conte or 2B Conte to the HB it really helps to blend but I need to push this to another level and basically just wrap around the form with the HB, just go crazy, seeing like, bring that volume out, and then, okay, what am I doing wrong? Like right now, I've noticed the arm that's in front may be too muscled, uh, but I wanted the shoulder, no, I wanted the elbow to show, and to see how I can link the elbow to the arm, especially that it's a deformed hand, that's like, a deformation that happened in the story thus how do I make it work and again the thought of making it squishy is uh, something that just kept popping in my mind yet because of the way I kind of learned things um, through a procedural method I kind of went back to that procedural shading type of form instead of you know just feeling it out thus I kind of need to you know be careful on that aspect or keep thinking about the character as the character and not just as um, a study or a, if you know what I mean it's weird it's very weird to say and I'm kind of noticing it if I look back at the final image and hair maybe just I don't know going full crazy with 2B having that value laid down and then scaling back it's it's an odd play of going full crazy with something just to not get it out of the way but get it out of your system getting the fear out of your system the fear of messing up the fear of having a too big volume screw it you know you just gotta take the hit take the long string combo and then change your strategy you know just put up your EX eraser <laughs> or put up your block strings or um, feel the heat and then counter attack so it's kind of weird like right now eventually I just got fed up with the knuckles which in my mind they were rocks yet I didn't think about what kind of rocks and now it's like okay well he's got volcanic powers so they should be volcanic rocks of course I completely forgot the extent uh, because there is a side a bit behind those knuckles and there's another side on the side of the arm so completely forgot about that but at least I got that idea out of this drawing okay volcanic rocks so I don't need to lighten up on those um, on the value I can just put them darker values and it'll contract or contrast with the hand like just getting those spots out there ah it's nuts also mixing it with your anatomy reference and your bone reference got this great application called Le Corchet uh, from what was it Steve Houston I think I am not even sure but Le Corchet it's an Android app and you get to scale uh, between the muscles you get to scale between the bones you know on a standard uh, figure but it helps just locating the muscles and seeing how they work another great application I picked up is uh, Skelly posable skeleton by uh, Dan Proko Damn it, man, Proko. This guy, this Proko, he's got some great lessons. But uh, yes, uh, Skelly helps me pose the skeleton as I want and then figure out, okay, well, chest bone, how is it supposed to work in this kind of pose and action or in this kind of angle? Just getting those um, landmarks, getting those landmarks set 
so that things kind of make sense with the character. But then you got to watch out. You don't want to make it hyper muscly, hyper bony, because that's not the character. So it's it's again, it's a tug of war, and I get to learn. And especially with the big size paper, I do get to learn a bit more about volume or just scaling back. So. It's a fun experiment. I really wish I could do comics like this, yet scanning would be ludicrous. And, well, if you can't scan, you can't put it on page, right? Um, anyhow, thanks again for the patience. All right, quick message. Extra stage just for Push Till Comic Con. I can't make that deadline. I can't. Uh, push Till Otaku Ton. I can't make the Comic Con deadline. Too many uh, freelancing to finish. So, sorry, guys. But there will be more updates, and I'll try to show a couple of things in the progress. So, yeah. Uh, newsprint and Conte, people. Respect it. Alright? As I'll respect it as well. And uh, always stick with those anatomy reference, people. So, thanks again for your patience. And I will try to bring more of these, you know, drawing sessions in the future. Later, guys.